In this particular lecture, let's go ahead and let's solve this issue wherein when we click on this add button, the page actually refreshes and the data is lost. So there are two problems which we are handling here. The first problem is we want to prevent the refresh of the page because when the page is refreshed, the data over here is lost. And the second problem which we want to solve here is that whatever item which we enter here, so let's say we add an item here, we actually want to save this into some permanent state. So the question is how to do that. So let's first solve the problem of the page being reloaded here. So typically what happens is whenever you submit a form, the page actually refreshes and that's because the form is being submitted. And that is actually the default behavior of uh, that particular app. And if you want to prevent that particular default behavior, you have to go ahead and make use of the prevent default method. So over here, in order to handle the form submission, what we do is we use the on submit method on this form. So I would say on submit and I would say that when the form is submitted, I want to execute a particular function. So let's say the function which we want to execute is handle submit. So we have not yet created this function. So let's go ahead and let's define that function here. So I would say function handle submit and I'll make this function accept an event. And what I would do is that in order to prevent the default behavior of the page being reloaded, I will use a method called as prevent default. So here I would say e dot prevent default. And that's it. Now let's see what happens if we try to submit the form. So I'll go back to the URL here. Let's type in something over here. And this time when I click on add, as you can see, the page no longer refreshes. And this is because now we have added this prevent default method, uh, which is an event method, which prevents this form from its default behavior of submitting and kind of refreshing that particular web page. All right, so we have handled the first problem here. Now let's move on to the next problem wherein we have to go ahead, capture this particular input which we have and then save it into something. So right now we have one state here and this particular state holds the current to do object which we have in here in the input. But in order to maintain a to do list, we actually need to have a list which contain all the items which are being entered here one by one. So let's say if I type in something like play here, and if I click on add, this item should be added to the list. If I go ahead and then replace this with, let's say have lunch and click on add, then it should also take this and add it to the list as well. So what I would do now is that I'll create a new state here and let's call that particular state as to do's. So this was a single to do. And in order to save all of those to do's together, I'll create a list called as to do's. So const, this is going to be to do's. And in order to set the items inside this to do's list, I will define a function called as set to do's. So I would say this equals use state. Now this particular to do's which we have here, this is not just a simple string, but instead this is going to be a list or it's going to be an array. Therefore I'll define square brackets here so that react understands that we actually want to store a list of to do's in there. All right. So now once we have this list of to do's, the next thing which we could do is whenever we actually have a to do item and whenever the form is submitted, we want to take that particular to do and sort of add that particular to do to the to do's list, which we have up over here. All right. So let's now go ahead. Let's take the to do item, which is entered here and then add it to this particular to do's list, which we have. So in order to add that, I'll use a method called as set to do's. Remember that you have to use set to do's not set to do. And over here, you could go ahead and take the single to do item and set it to to do. So you might think that you could do something like to do, but this won't work. And the reason why this won't work is because this set to do's is actually able to set an array. However, this to do which we have here is a string. So that means this set to do actually has to set up an array and you cannot simply pass in a single to do item here. Instead, you actually have to pass in an array. So we could say that, okay, we'll create an array and inside that array, we will pass in the current studio item, which we have. So let's see if this works. So right now, after doing this, let's console log the to do's as well in order to get an idea of what exactly is present in there. So if I say to do's here, let's see what happens. So I'll go back here, open up a console. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right. So let's add lunch here. 
So when I click on add, as you can see, you get nothing over here, even though the to do is set. And this happens because this set to do's which we have actually sets the to do's in an asynchronous way. So therefore it will first execute this code and then it will set the to do's which we have. So if you actually want to console log what's exactly in there inside the to do's, what you could do is you could actually do that up over here. So over here, I could make use of the JavaScript code and say console.log. And let's say I want to log the to-dos. All right. So after that, let me get rid of the console log from here. Or one more thing which you could do here is that instead of console logging, you could even set the to-dos over here directly. So you could say to-dos and those to-dos would be displayed up over there. However, we won't do that. All right. So once we have this, uh, let's take a look at what exactly happens now. So first of all, you'll get an empty to do's here as we have not added any item. Now let me add in lunch. So if I add lunch here, as you can see, it says lunch is added. But now watch what happens when I add some other item here. So let's say if I add play here and if I click on add, this time the lunch is completely replaced and a new item play is set. And this is quite obvious because here what we are essentially doing is that we are creating a new array and we are only taking the current to do item which we have. However, we don't want to do that. We also want to retain the previous item as well. So the question is, how would you retain the previous item? So you could retain the previous items inside an array using the spread operator. So what we do is that we say, okay, we want to create an array and we want to have a to do over there as well. But along with this, I also want to have all the previous values which we had inside those particular to do's. So in order to get the previous values, I could make use of the spread operator here and say to do's. So what this does is that even before setting the to do's to this new array, it will first take all the items which are currently present in the end to do, which means the previous items. And then after laying out the previous items here, then it will take the new item, which is the to do item, which we have just typed in in the input box. And then it will set the entire to do array to the old items plus the new item which we have added. So let's see how this works now. So I'll hit refresh. I would add play. When I click on add, now it has play. Now let me change this thing to lunch. If I click on add this time, as you can see, we have play as well as lunch. Now let me add in homework. If I click on add this time, we have play lunch and homework as well. This means now the items which we have added before are now retained and now our to do list looks full. Now this to do list only empties out whenever we go ahead and refresh this particular page. So if you refresh this page, all of your data is going to get lost. All right. So now let's try one more thing here. And that thing is, uh, let's say if I add dinner here and if I click on add, this should automatically reset back to blank. That means this input field should be cleared. So the question is how exactly to do that. So in order to do that inside this particular handle submit right after setting the to do's, I could simply go ahead and in order to clear up the input field, this input field actually has a value, which is to do. So that means I simply have to empty out the value of to do. So in order to make the value of to do as empty, I could make use of the set to do function, which I have. So I could say set to do, and I would say set it to empty. So let's see what happens now. So let me hit refresh. Let's add play here. And as soon as I click on add, this thing clears out. And now I could type in something else, click on add, and even that thing clears out. And now we have items added to the to-do list like that. So this is how you could go ahead and add items taken from this particular input field to a to-do list. Now in the next lecture, let's learn how we could take all of these items which we have. And then instead of logging these items into the console, uh, let's actually display them up over here on this web page. So let's learn how exactly we could do that in the next one.